Erwin Schrödinger, the Nobel Prize winning physicist, posed a profound question in 1943. What is life? His lectures and book bridged physics and biology, inspiring a new era of science. In the midst of World War II, one of the architects of quantum physics turned his mind to a simple, yet profound mystery. What is life? In a series of public lectures in Dublin 1943, physicist Erwin Schrödinger asked how the events inside a living cell could be explained by the laws of physics and chemistry. This question became the basis of his thin 1944 book, What is Life? A work that would spark a scientific revolution. It might seem surprising, but this little book, less than 100 pages, ended up inspiring a generation of biologists and even guided the discovery of DNA's double helix. Schrodinger's clear, imaginative thinking bridged disciplines. He showed that life secrets could be approached with the eyes of a physicist, without losing the wonder that makes us ask deep questions. The result was inspirational and thought-provoking a scientific classic that changed how we understand biology and even how we think about consciousness. Schrodinger began by highlighting a paradox. Living organisms avoid chaos and decay, maintaining order even as physics says the universe tends toward disorder or entropy. How can life seem to defy the second law of thermodynamics? Schrodinger's answer, life does not defy physics at all. Instead, it feeds on something he called negative entropy. In simple terms, an organism imports order and energy from its environment. For example, by eating food or absorbing sunlight, and exports disorder, like waste and heat, back out, thus keeping itself highly organized. This was a pioneering idea. Living systems continually exchange energy and order with their surroundings, preventing decay. Schrodinger used this concept to explain metabolism. The process that keeps us alive is essentially an entropy export machine, shuffling disorder out so we can stay orderly. In his words, what an organism feeds upon is negative entropy. It's a poetic way to say that life only appears to reverse entropy locally by making the outside world a bit more disordered, thereby obeying the overall laws of physics. This insight was one of the first times anyone framed the problem of life in terms of thermodynamics and information, an approach that now underpins much of systems biology and complexity science. At the time, many biologists still believed in a mysterious vital force beyond physics, or they simply hadn't considered how physical laws like entropy applied to life. Schrodinger, coming from a physics background, introduced the idea that order can arise from disorder under the right rules. He gave the example of diffusion individually random motions of molecules can produce a very orderly overall behavior. Likewise, the order in living cells might emerge from underlying molecular chaos, guided by some organizing principles. By demystifying life in this way, Schrodinger set the stage for a new kind of biology, one based on physics and chemistry, rather than vitalism. One of the most influential ideas in what is life is Schrodinger's speculation about genes and heredity. In the 1940s, scientists knew heredity was carried by something in our cells. They suspected chromosomes, but they didn't know what genes were made of or how they stored information. Schrodinger tackled this head on. He reasoned that whatever the hereditary material is, it must be small in size to fit in a cell, yet stable and long lasting, and capable of holding a vast amount of information. These requirements were puzzling. A naive physicist might think you need a huge, complex machine to store the blueprint of a living organism. But Schrodinger proposed a brilliant alternative. A molecule could do it, if it were special enough. He introduced the concept of an aperiodic crystal. A normal crystal, like a salt crystal, has a repeating pattern of atoms. It's periodic and orderly, but contains the same information over and over. An aperiodic crystal, on the other hand, would have a complex, non-repeating molecular structure, unique along its length, and thus could encode a complex message much like a book, written with a unique sequence of letters. Schrodinger suggested that each gene is an aperiodic crystal, a solid, orderly arrangement of atoms, where the specific sequence of units holds a code script for the organism's development. In his words, 
The chromosomes contain a code that somehow spells out the entire blueprint of the living creature's body and function. This was a revolutionary leap of imagination. The first clear suggestion that genes store information in a coded form. At a time when many believed genes might be made of proteins, and that DNA was a dull, repetitive molecule, Schrodinger's idea stood out. He compared the gene to a miniature library or tapestry, containing a detailed plan for the organism, rather than a single repeating motif. This mind-expanding metaphor of a hereditary code script, essentially a genetic instruction book, was ahead of its time. Biologists of the 1940s didn't yet speak in terms of digital information or codes, but Schrodinger, coming from physics, intuited that genetics was an information problem. Today, this sounds obvious. We casually talk about the genetic code, DNA sequences, bits and base pairs. But in 1944, this idea was sensationally new. Schrodinger essentially foresaw that understanding life would require cracking the code inside molecules, and he urged scientists to find those molecules. Schrodinger wasn't working alone in a vacuum. He built on clues from other scientists. He was inspired by a 1935 paper by physicist Max Delbruck and geneticist Nikolai Timofeev Rosovsky, which hinted that genes might be large molecules made of many atoms. Schrodinger took this and ran with it. He declared that if such a molecular picture of genes failed, we'd have to give up. But if it succeeded, it would be a new dawn for biology. With his aperiodic crystal hypothesis, he gave scientists a concrete vision of what to look for, find the molecule with a complex, non-repeating structure that encodes life's information, and you'll find the secret of heredity. Another groundbreaking aspect of what is life was Schrodinger's attempt to bridge quantum physics and biology. Remember, Schrodinger was one of the fathers of quantum mechanics. He understood deeply how atoms and molecules behave. He noticed a conundrum. How can genes be so stable, faithfully copying information every generation, yet occasionally mutate? Classical or pre-quantum physics couldn't easily explain such stability in something as small as a molecule. You'd expect lots of randomness and decay at atomic scales. Schrodinger argued that quantum theory holds the key. Molecules are stable because of quantum mechanics. Electrons in atoms can only occupy certain discrete states, which makes chemical bonds robust. In Schrodinger's view, the stability of the gene is a quantum phenomenon, and when a gene does change, a mutation, it might happen due to a rare event akin to a quantum jump inside the molecule. In quantum physics, an electron can jump from one energy state to another. Schrodinger suggested something similar might cause an atom in a gene to shift, flipping a bit of the code. Thus, a tiny atomic rearrangement, a quantum leap, could produce a large biological change, a mutation. This was a bold proposal linking the unseen world of subatomic physics to the macroscopic traits of living beings. Today we know that mutations often do result from a single atomic change in DNA, like a base changing, which is indeed a quantum scale event. Schrodinger's idea was a precursor to what we now call quantum biology. In fact, the origins of quantum biology are often traced back to Schrodinger's 1944 book. He wasn't the only one. Other physicists like Niels Bohr and Pascual Jordan also pondered quantum principles in life. But Schrodinger's book widely spread the notion that quantum mechanics might be essential to understanding life's processes. This foresight is remarkable. More than 75 years later, modern scientists are finding that quantum effects, like tunneling and entanglement, play roles in enzymes, photosynthesis, and possibly even a bird's navigation. Schrodinger's speculation that mutations are quantum leaps has literal truth in the sense of single-atom changes, and it opened minds to the idea that biology is not divorced from physics. It is deeply rooted in it. Toward the end of what is life, Schrodinger ventured beyond biology into profound philosophical questions. He titled his final chapter, Determinism and Free Will, and in it, he grappled with the mystery of human consciousness. This might seem surprising. What does consciousness have to do with the physics of life? But Schrodinger was unafraid to address the big picture. 
he essentially asked, if our bodies are made of atoms obeying physical laws, then what is the role of our mind, our subjective experience of making choices? He laid out the dilemma. On the one hand, my body functions as a pure mechanism according to the laws of nature. On the other, I know I direct its motions by my consciousness. How can both be true? Schrodinger wanted to see if these seemingly contradictory facts could be reconciled. His conclusion was bold and thought-provoking. Schrodinger suggested that consciousness might be a unified phenomenon, that in a certain sense there is only one mind, one single eye common to all beings. This idea was influenced by ancient Hindu philosophy. Schrodinger referenced the Upanishads, which teach that the individual self, Atman, is fundamentally identical to the universal self or ultimate reality, Brahman. He wrote that consciousness is a singular of which the plural is unknown, implying that your sense of being an I and my sense of being an I are ultimately reflections of one greater existence. In this view, each of us is not an isolated island of consciousness, but part of a cosmic unity.